Fusion 360 drawings. Let's run with that rod extension part from last week and create a drawing with it. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. We've got our part open to create a drawing. Top left of your screen, go File, New Drawing, From Design. I'm going to pick uh, eight and a half by 11 vertical sheet and full assembly would be if you've got multiple components and you only want to do a drawing on one of them, you would uncheck full assembly and just pick the component you want. We've only got one component here, so it doesn't matter. And I'm going to give a forewarning. There is some major work that needs done. Improvements, glitches, little things in Fusion 360 drawings. It's coming. I'm not going to apologize for it because some of it is just, some of it really needs a lot of work, but it's going to be great. Uh, before I place this part, I'm going to change my scale to 1 to 2, and I'll just click right here to place the part. Now, if you're wondering why I did a vertical drawing, because most of the time your prints are on landscape, one of the reasons is because, and this stinks, um, you can't rotate this part in a drawing right now. Hopefully they're going to fix that soon. So the way, they, the way we created this one, if I double click it right now, you can see Visible and hidden edges, that's fine. We change it to visible edges, you'll see we don't see the, uh, the bore. Um, I actually don't know why on this print I'm not seeing the flats for the wrench. I wonder if that's a glitch or something I did. We'll click close though. So some basics, we can add uh, annotation text. And we'll drag a box up here and we'll type rod extension May 2016. Oops, and place that. And oops, you know what? I want that to be bigger font. So oh, well, that's maybe a glitch right there. Why isn't that? There we go. To move stuff, it's kind of weird. You got to kind of click it, and then usually you'll see a. There we go. Here's the little gray box you got to drag it around with. Um, okay, first thing is the most common, which is dimension something. I'll go to annotation, and I'll pick the first dimension, and we could pick. I like to zoom in, it really helps to pick the correct object. I'll dimension from here and down. Oop, too far down to the bottom here and we get 7.25 perfect I can do the same thing again I'll zoom in from here to here it's the four and see you get that little thing um, that means we didn't click the right end line I think so I'm gonna hit control Z to undo or not I'll hit delete maybe uh, that's something where again you know I'll be deliberate there in there. Well, I don't know what to say. Somebody chime in on why that's happening. I've noticed it's buggy, but usually I can get it fixed. On this seven and a quarter, let's say I wanted to change um, some information on it. If I double click, I can say alternate units. That's kind of cool. Gives me the uh, millimeters. And again, I can see a little gray box. I can drag that over. And that'll let me show it off to the side a little. And you know, on the four inches, we could say, let's add a tolerance uh, deviation. Let's say plus zero minus five foul. And again, you see the um, formatting stinks. You should have all the decimals on the plus zero. Stuff like this is going to get fixed. Um, change our precision. There we go. That's better. Sort of better. And we can do additional dimensions as well. We're on the dimension option, which kind of is an intelligent feature. It looks for whatever you're clicking on. But if you want to force it to something, you know, a radius or a diameter, click on diameter and click. Actually, I don't know if I can't really do a diameter from this perspective. So we'll add a view. We'll go view, base view. I'll change it to front. 
top, one to two, click OK. And now I could do a diameter, click here, 2.5. Pretty straightforward, I think. Um, a couple other things I wanted to show that are, are cool. If you want to do a dimension that's not um, a linear or, hor or a vertical or horizontal, but rather between two points, you could choose a lined dimension. So, you know, if you wanted to do a dimension for some reason between that point and that point, that lets you lets, lets you do that. Detail view, super cool. Uh, views, detail view. So select parent view. It'll be this parent view. And then select center point. Let's have the center point be right here. And I'm going to drag. See, I'm moving my mouse out to create this circle. You know, that looks good. And now I can really zoom in. I'll say scale of 2 to 1. And click here to place it. Click OK. And then take a look. Um, detail A, scale 2 to 1, and it shows me where A is referenced to. And now I can see that um, thread relief or counter more or whatever you want to call it. Uh, right there with the chamfer. That's really nice. Section view is si uh, similar, very cool. Views, section view. Now I have a really hard time uh, with the cursor on this. So select parent view, I'll click here. Now select start point, I'm going to click right here. I'm just going to move my mouse down. Now here's what's weird, I think. Don't click again to place it. See, I can still move it around. I'm just going to hit enter. Oh no, I got to click once. I'm going to click once. Now hit enter. Don't specify another point. And that's going to let me drag this over. Click OK. Click OK. And now I've got a cross section view of that part. Why is it not? Shouldn't, <laughs> doesn't look right, right folks? Shouldn't that show the solid portion as well? Let's try that again. Section view. Oh yeah, that's where I go. Let's just say one to one, or let's hear one, one to four. Oh, I see hidden edges as well. Maybe that's what I did. My fault. There we go. My mistake. Um, well, here, can we undo that? Yeah. Just double click this. I went. I just went back and undid. And if I double click this, visible and hidden edges. There we go. Much better. So section view is super useful. The great thing about this is uh, we'll save our drawing here. A bomb rod extension. And not even gonna close it. If I go into the part here and I edit the sketch, and let's say we change it to a three inch diameter shaft. My model's updated. If I had this programmed in CAM, my CAM code could automatically update for a CNC machine. And then I think I gotta hit save. Certainly good measure. When I hop back into here, I get this warning. Hey, your part has changed. See up here, just click uh, get latest, boom, automatically updates. So that's really cool, that's super useful. That means the work you put into one of these isn't lost if you wanna make changes, automatically updating, that's huge. Hope you enjoyed that, folks. Take care, see you next Friday.